Uh, yeah, so this is Death to Slide Decks, why your next presentation needs to be a web page. Again, my name is Rachel Winchester, but you can just call me Win. Uh, and this website is at my own domain, visualwebmaster.com slash death to slide decks. Uh, there's one thing I want to point out. If you really like this presentation and you want to see it again, or if you want to recommend it to your friend, I'm actually giving it this presentation again next week to the Black Press meetup. So Black Press, shout out to Black Press. Um, you can join the Black Press meetup at all the other meetups at meetup.com. And this is next Wednesday at noon. All right. Great. Here's my presentation. Just going to go full screen. Um, all right. So I'll start off with just a question to pose to give to all of you, and you can answer out loud. Just just say what whatever comes to mind. When you think of the word page, what comes to mind? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so the reason I'm asking is because uh, your answer could have, a, have to do with a lot of different factors. Um, I, I said before that I am a product designer, but my background is actually in art history. I have a degree in art history. Um, and art history is a lot more than just you know, studying paintings in museums. It's looking at the entire visual culture. How do people see based on the technology that's around them? What are they looking at? What are they look, using to see? So um, a lot of uh, uh, your answer for this question could depend on what you saw around you growing up. If you had web pages around or just books, if you grew up with the internet and computers, or if you grew up with um, using that technology in that way or, or not. Um, so I'm trying to get you to think about technology, visual culture, but also history and, and, and generations. All right, so this presentation is structured in three parts, and I'm starting with the when. So again, I studied art history. It was, I loved doing that, and I, it was a great way to, to look back at how things were, to understand why we are the way we are in the present, and understand things moving forward. So I structured this, this presenta presentation to start with the when, so that we can take a look at history, and then we can figure out why we need to change and why web page presentations make so much sense right now. So in the past, slideshows started around circa 1600. These were images shown one by one in sequence. Uh, an image would be um, created in a, in a material called acetate that was semi-transparent and uh, put in front of a a projector with a light source and the image would be projected onto the screen. So we get the slide deck from the slideshow, uh, images one by one in a deck um, shown in succession in a sequen sequence to kind of tell a story and, and give a, uh, a presentation. So that's where we get the slide deck. That was a long time ago. Who remembers the 1600s? No. Right around 1987 is when Microsoft PowerPoint came out with, uh, with when Microsoft came out with PowerPoint. Uh, so this actually predates the mass adoption of the internet. So the first PowerPoint was used on computers that weren't necessarily connected to the internet. Uh, here's a picture of the Apple Macintosh One that I think is from 1984. So the original uh, PowerPoint was on devices like this. Going into the future, we're still using PowerPoint on newer devices, laptops, touchscreens, smartphones, and tablets, but it's still the same PowerPoint. Maybe they've added some more bells and whistles and audio and, and other things, but it's still the same idea. Slides shown in succession one by one. Google added some cool stuff by making it, putting it in the cloud. You can collaborate in real time, but it's still PowerPoint. So now, how do we transition into the future? So slide decks, slideshows, and PowerPoints are tied to a time when content was static and contained in finite pages. We navigated through content by moving from slide to slide, page, page to page. We had to turn the page or hit next. So here's an old photo of some ladies in the library or someplace reading very large newspapers. 
having to turn those giant sheets over and over. But that, that was the content, that was the way news um, was put out on, um, in that kind of way, on those giant sheets of paper. But even fast forward to more modern times where we're using e-readers, uh, it's still the same format. So they just kind of take the same format of a page or a book and they put it inside of a digital device. Uh, so with this e-reader, e e you probably have to swipe to turn the page or maybe click the button. So it gives you that illusion of reading a, a, a paper or book. So noticing all these technological advances, I really look back to my own art historical um, knowledge and remembered this huge point in history. Uh, the Horse in Motion by Edward Muybridge. Uh, this um, is such a big point in history because he solved a huge problem that a lot of us were having. So transitions have always been a problem with visual storytelling, but now there are modern solutions. So Edward Muybridge in Philadelphia of all places, in 1878, um, figured out how to give the illusion of motion in a video by rapidly showing uh, these 16 frames in, in rapid succession. So you see each frame is just a little bit different from the next, and each of these 16 frames are showed in succession in that, in that GIF. Um, so it's the illusion of motion, and that's how video was created. So he solved a huge, huge problem by coming up with this, um, by coming up with motion picture this way. This also reminded me of um, uh, just myself growing up and seeing, seeing uh, other types of imagery, not necessarily video, but other types of um, digital, digital screens, images on screens, where the transitions got better and better with time. So on the left, you see a GIF of Galaga, the arcade game. Um, if you were growing up in maybe the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, going to the arcade and seeing all these 8-bit um, games get better and better in a higher, higher resolution, uh, you know, maybe this, uh, this game was, was just kind of made sense to you. However, me, when I was introduced to this game, maybe around 2005 or 2010, just thinking about my age, this game was disorienting. It was, it was weird. I couldn't tell like, if the missile actually hit me or if I got the missile to hit the alien or the, whatever those things are. Um, the frame rate was, it was just too choppy <laughs> because the frame rate wasn't, wasn't what I was used to seeing when I'd watch Nickelodeon and cartoon with video and, and, and you know, high resolution video with fast frame rates where, the, where everything is very lifelike. This was not lifelike for me and it was disorienting. Uh, another example from the past, if you think of um, older computers with a really old interface, if you scroll down through content too fast, the content will take a while to load. So if you're used to scrolling up and down to a page like we are today, like this, we know the content loads quickly. But in this older interface, if you scroll down all the way to the end of the page, you have to wait a few seconds for the content to appear. Um, so as transitions get smoother, content becomes seamless. Today we can present content in a way that matches how we naturally view and experience the world. So in the present, we have digital video circa 1986. Uh, as I've explained before, digital video is made of images displayed in rapid frequency. I decided to show this video because showing clapping, capturing clapping and rap that rapid movement and then displaying it again to an audience, that's hard. That was hard, historically speaking. This is a very new kind of accomplishment. Uh, and also in, with video, we've got um, graphics, interchange format, so GIFs, GIFs or GIFs? GIFs, GIFs. I was saying it right, right? Okay. Um, so GIFs are still a newer kind of media file, but uh, not the same as a digital video. It's a much smaller media file, because as you can probably tell, there's a, a, 
maybe a handful, maybe a dozen images in this, in this sequence that are in that media file. So it's much smaller than a video file, uh, which is why GIFs are popular, because they're much smaller files. <clears throat> so not only has content evolved drastically, but so has the way that we interact with content. So digital interfaces exist now. We've started with uh, keyboards and, and a mouse, and now we've got touchscreen. Now we've got even VR and other, other types of actions and ways to control digital interfaces. We've even got video games. This guy's playing a video game, a first-person shooter game, inside a smartphone, using only his thumbs to control his character in that virtual world and also using his thumbs to control the interface and hit the buttons around the outside. This is all very new. I mean, we're maybe used to it now, especially people at a word camp, very techie people. Um, but historically speaking, this is very new. So some of this history that I'm referencing is Web3. Web3 is a multifaceted word. It has a lot to do with uh, you know, blockchain and and AI and, and just uh, the idea that internet is everywhere. So because the internet is everywhere and the internet is ubiquitous, it's starting to, we're starting to understand that visual language. Um, everyone, people young and old are, are using internet connected devices, digital devices, and we now all are starting to understand um, the internet as its own language. Um, <clears throat> so, times have changed and it's time to transition into the future. Pun number one. I only have a couple in here, because. So my thesis is that web page, web page presentations fit in with today's visual culture. They match how we naturally view and experience the world. So today in 2023, Everyone's got a smartphone. Who doesn't have a smartphone? Okay. Who doesn't have a laptop? Who doesn't have a TV? Okay. <laughs> um, so this kind of imagery, again, thinking about art history and visual culture, it's the things that we're using to see and it's the things that we're seeing around us that help us create this kind of visual language that we can use to communicate. So let's all get on the same page now. Okay, I guess that wasn't funny. <laughs> so in the future, AKA now, starting now, we should think about content in terms of where it's like frame, window, feed, viewing area, and canvas. Um, I think a lot of you are probably already aware of these words using with, in, use, being used with tech. Um, and we can think about interactions in terms of scroll, zoom, swipe, click, pinch, et cetera. So again, this is this visual language that we are starting to all get on board with, just because the internet is ubiquitous. So this is really getting into the why, why we should switch to web page presentations and leave PowerPoints in the past. So content today, again, in digital interfaces, we have a canvas. So a canvas, before, I mean, without a, before a computer, a canvas was just a, a place where an artist can create. Similarly, um, designers use um, uh, softwares like Figma, Adobe, and Sketch, and those have canvases where we create. So this darker square on the inside of this Figma screen is called, inside of the screen, is called the canvas. Frames, everyone knows frames from their glasses. A lot of people wearing glasses around here. Frames on around uh, a painting or an image. So a frame is something that, that encompasses the content. Similarly, it's going back to Figma, uh, a frame will encompass content. So here I've uh, designed an app screen and this purple square that I've selected is a frame. So I've selected that piece of content. I could even select the whole phone and that could, that'll be a frame. So frames are just the part of content that you're currently looking at. More frames um, 
uh, with digital video. So depending on the frame rate of a video or GIF, it can look choppy or smooth. So frames are very important with video because that's what makes it lifelike. Uh, and it, it's also what makes GIFs so funny. Uh, because GIFs are choppy, I think they work so great for comedy. Um, baseball fans out there, raise your hand if you watch baseball. Are you a Braves fan? Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's the, the Phillies uh, fanatic. That's the green monster. And the Philly Flyers, the hockey team mascot, uh, Gritty. Yeah, Philly has the best mascots. <laughs> All right, viewing areas, similar to frames and screens, viewing areas, AKA viewports, are the area of a world that you are currently looking at. So this guy is using a v VR headset. Every time he, he's, he moves his head side to side, he's, he's looking at a different viewing area. So similarly with uh, uh, video games, when you are in it, have, a, have a character in the world, the world that you are currently seeing, the part of the world that you're currently seeing is a viewing area. Windows, I think windows are easy. Everyone's seen windows and we've got windows computers with windows in them. Oops, sorry, accidentally uh, hit something there. Hmm? Oh yeah, more, more windows. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Interactions with content. Scroll, the scroll is super popular. We've had scrolls before, before digital interfaces and now we've got a lot more scrolling in digital interfaces. Scrolling is very popular. It's practically addicting. As we've learned from TikTok and Twitter and Facebook and all those feeds with an endless Scroll, TikTok on the clock and the scrolling don't stop. Anyone on TikTok? Raise your hand if you're on TikTok. How could, you can spend all day on it, right, yeah. can't you? Yeah, yeah. It's the content, but also the way we interact with it. Pan and zoom. If you are a photographer, you probably use these words pretty often. Uh, when you, pan is when you move through a viewing area, and zoom is when you go in or out of a viewing area. So uh, if this photographer was, had her focus on the cyclist, the cyclist would be in focus, as you see, and the background is blurry because she's following the cyclist. Uh, sand, zoom, and pinch can be used all together with digital interfaces, digital interfaces, especially touchscreen. Um, this guy is using a, a tablet to, I don't know, discover the moon, panning, zooming, pinching, just to explore the viewing area. And click, press, I think we all know what that is. All right, so here is a screen I put together to kind of, uh, as it, like an analogy of, well, it's a bit of everything put together. <laughs> so first we're looking at the beautiful city of Philadelphia. Who's been to Philly? The city of brotherly love. Yes. Oh, the video stopped. Hmm. Huh, okay, well, that is one of the biggest downsides to having a presentation in a web page. <laughs> um, but that has also happened on, on, a inter on um, some of the uh, online when I've given this talk online. Um, but what I'm trying to show you is you have the whole world. A whole world is filled with content. As a presenter, as a public speaker, you have an entire world of content at, at your fingertips to include in your presentation. You wanna tell a story, you wanna have a narrative, have a thesis or an argument. So you need to strategically take the content and sequence it and display it to your audience to tell that story. So if the world is filled with content, and I'm showing you the whole world, um, I have um, added this monitor on top of the world to show you that you can select and show the specific part of the world that you want to show to your viewers at that time. So here's the mall. That's going towards South Philly, I think. That's City Hall. 
But also this screen, this section of uh, this web page is probably something that you can really most easily build in a web page. It's not something you can easily put in a PowerPoint. Um, I use Elementor to build most of my sites, uh, especially this, especially my presentations. And Elementor has a, has a really cool feature where you can turn on mouse effects. So I've added um, the mouse follow, I forgot what it's called, sorry. But um, this image is, is essentially just following my mouse as I move it around. But it's also a web page. And with the web page, we can pan and zoom. We can pinch and, and, and put some content in more focus. Or we can zoom out and, and, and um, see the bigger picture. So this section is pretty much a, a way to show all of what I've been talking about coming together in one. Um, it still works as a, as a static image, but it would work even better if the video was working. Um, so sorry about that. Um, but maybe it's a good time to talk about the pros and cons of web page presentations. So I think we've realized a big con is just Wi-Fi. Um, so pros and cons, some advantages of web page presentations, and I'll show some cons, potential issues to be aware of, but also how to get past them. Um, and I'd love to, um, if you guys think of more pros and cons, I'd love for you to let me know in the Q&A afterwards. Um, so first of all, of course, it's a living document. It's a web page. You can update as needed. You can fix errors. If your brand changes, you can update the brand. In, in the style guide and it'll, it'll just transfer over to your web page. You can treat it as a web page as we all know. We're all WordPress people here. Um, you can be a lot more creative. So you can do everything you can do with a PowerPoint and so much more. And then of course, SEO and marketing, I think are the biggest reasons that I make web page presentations. Um, you, it's, it's, on my web page, uh, sorry, it's on my website. I share the link everywhere. Every time I give the same presentation, I post that same link. So this this page on my website is probably the most visited page, um, and it's it's really um, it's great for for all that uh, SEO and marketing. Uh, as far as cons go, so you have to develop a website or a web page at least. Um, I guess that's not too hard for people in this room, but uh, for other people, um, there, there are easy ways to learn to build a website. You can use page builders and CMS. I also have a tutorial for how to use Elementor and get started with Elementor if you, if you wanna use the same tools that I do. Uh, but if you don't have the resources to make a site or the, the time, you could try these other options. So Google Docs has a new pageless format. Has anyone tried the pageless format yet? I love it. It is revolutionary, isn't it? Um, it's under the, I think it's under the view tab, but when you scroll down, instead of having a page break, it's just seamless content. So if you, you can use that as a presentation, put it in full screen mode, make images big, make the text big, and you can just turn a Google Doc into a presentation. Same with uh, Tumblr, if you have, Tumblr is kind of like a, a social media site, but your page can be a little bit more customizable, so you can add more aesthetic stuff. Um, and then a blog post. So let's say you are part of an organization that has a website, and maybe you contribute to the blog. A, a, blog, uh, um, a blog post can easily be turned into a presentation. Uh, so instead of creating your own website, you can just add to your organization's website instead. Um, accessibility um, is a con, but it's also an interesting question. So, I mean, you can do the normal tips like, you know, add alt text to photos, follow the correct heading outline structure, of course, scroll slowly and... Um, other, some, some other tips like using mouse effects instead of animations. So using, uh, making sure I can control mu movement with my mouse rather than having an animation just autoplay without my control. So um, 
that's that's one reason to use mouth, mouse effects. Um, use REM for paragraph text. This um, uh, um, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. So it can scale easier. <clears throat> Um, and also add a disclaimer in the header. So I'm just gonna scroll up real quickly to show you my accessibility disclaimer in the header. Do, 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 do. This is above my title slide, so I started on this slide, but it wasn't the first. Oh, and it's not a slide, it's a section of a web page. Accessibility no notice. Um, I, it's, this is a presentation, which means this web page is supposed to be I'm supposed to show it to you. It's not necessarily made for you to go through on your own. So that's the accessibility question. If someone does find an accessibility issue going through this page on their own, is that an issue? Um, I'm gonna use the table of contents to, there we go. Um, yeah, so if, I am supposed to be presenting this web page. If someone finds an accessibility issue when they discover the web page on their own, is that necessarily an issue? So that's, that's still a question I'm trying to figure out. Uh, and another con is performance. I'm sure you've noticed this is a long web page with a lot of photos and other, other assets. So it could, it could um, definitely be hard to keep the performance um, where it needs to be. So you can add Features like lazy load, um, you can create a static website. My, my website is uh, static. So um, that means that uh, after I create the page, um, when I deploy the website, it's all the pages are kind of compressed into a tiny HTML, fi HTML file. And it's, and it's uh, when, a, when a visitor visits my site, that small file is sent to their computer, their um, client. So it's not a dynamic, two-way connection, the way like, you know, an e-commerce site might be. Um, it's just, it's, it's a, it's just a, it's just a simple web page. Um, and you can also consider your web host when um, creating web pages like this. All right. <clears throat> uh, so I'll just go over a little bit more about how to build web page presentations and uh, some elements that I, like to add and some tips and tricks um, that, that I try to stick to. Uh, of course, media is a big one to um, photos, videos, and, and GIFs are essential for visual storytelling. So add a lot of photos and make them big. Links are essential for marketing and SEO. To keep your spot in your presentation, have links open in a new tab rather than that same page. Um, and for accessibility, add a disclaimer to your header that the link's open in the new tab. Table of contents. As you see to the left in the sidebar, I have this table of contents here. It's a little uh, formatted a little weird there, but it's great for, um, again, going back and forth through the sections, especially in Q&A when I wanna quickly go to a specific section. Social share, I had my social share buttons right at the top and again at the bottom, essential for marketing. Uh, and make it easy for your audience by putting them in obvious places. Uh, accordion, accordions are great. You can hide content until you want your audience to see it, like I had in the pros and cons section. Reading progress bar, so that's that red bar at the top that you see. Uh, as I scroll down the page, it, it, it gets longer and longer, so it shows you how, how close to the end I am. Uh, and sometimes your web, the web page's scroll bar isn't visible in every web browser, so some users turn this off intentionally, so it's good to have that reading progress bar. Animations, keep things interesting by adding movement, but don't overdo it, uh, they can be distracting. Hover effects, use it to draw attention to a specific spot in your presentation. Uh, I was using hover effects with the photos, so all of the photos were in black and white, and then when I referenced them, I put the mouse, I, I hovered over the image and it would turn to full color. 
A header and footer announces the beginning and end of a presentation. Great branding opportunity and uh, also a great way to collect, collect questions and comments. So I do have a, um, an actual form in the footer where you can submit, submit questions and comments. The sidebar helps with navigation and is another branding opportunity. And then forms, uh, collect feedback, comments, and questions in targeted spots. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could have put a form maybe in the third section, right after I asked you that question, what, do you, what comes to mind when you think of the word page? I could add a form there and have people actually submit their answers. Um, and it helps make the presentation more interactive. Uh, and some more tips. These are great tips, I guess, for all visual storytelling, but especially web page presentations. Minimize, clean up your browser window by hiding the book, books mark, uh, excuse me, bookmarks bar and closing unnecessary tabs. I actually just went full screen, which is easier. Use a lot of white space and stay away from unnecessary and distracting elements. Uh, definitely try and stay minimal. Narrate, use your cursor like a laser like a laser pointer, and say each interaction you take. Not every interaction is obvious to your audience. You ever see um, someone in a presentation like hover over a button and you don't know if they click it or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta say when you're, when you're gonna click something. It, it definitely helps. Compose, composition, composition and storytelling will always matter the most. Think, how can a web page format tell my story better? Uh, create, make something visually appealing to your audience, express yourself in your brand in creative ways, and have fun with your designs. So I think web page presentations are cool and new, but I think there are all other types of other formats for presentations that I should try out and see how that works too. So, Next time you might see from me presentations on like a digital canvas, so maybe an entire presentation in Figma, um, or presentations in VR and, and AR. I know some people who are already doing that in this room. All right, so thank you, thank you all for coming to my, to my uh, presentation. Uh, I, we, I would love to just discuss your questions and especially pros and cons if you've noticed any more. And I do have this form as well if you um, have longer, more, more feedback to give or anything like that. So thank you so much for coming. Okay. Okay, well, I start, I start with the accessibility notice. That's some presentation dates. I don't know why I forgot to add WordCamp Atlanta here. It should be like right here. But the Black Press Meetup is there too. And share buttons. Oh, so you probably missed um, my opening question. Yeah. And so you probably didn't get the pun because you didn't see the opening question. <laughs> Yes. Um, I actually have uh, you know, come up the pros and cons. I have three of them. Um, one was uh, you, you mentioned share with the SEO, um, but I also like that at the top of the screen you actually have uh, the events. That you get so it's more like a, a way that you can promote other things in a minute as well. So I'm going to see what other events you yeah. see. Yeah. Um, I, I like that you can add additional things um, also, another pro I would think that those things have on the slides like that is um, adding other resources to help with them. Um, so, having an investigation to add the PDF components you know, that are not just here to down on the slides, but like a specific here so that they are points so that people can have something from them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you put uh, accessibility under the comms, but then you know, another mm -hmm. pro for accessibility uh, is that people have it makes your presentation more accessible to people, that people can you know, see everything that knocks an optical experience of watching it. But, um, but that is, as opposed to me just like going to uh, somewhere and actually something like how phone size, something that can actually uh, you interact with text, change it, uh, but it doesn't seem that everything 
yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. So, um, also on the on the pros, one of the my challenges is sending out my like, slides afterwards. If people mm -hmm. reach them, like it would just be great to do on the website, and if I can, you can just go to that website. I think that's that's really great. My own question to you is when you're putting together. You see, for me, slides are almost like a book. So uh, as an artist, that's how I see it visually, like I'm turning a book and I'm telling a story. How does that translate for you as an artist, scrolling as opposed to turning? I, I start everything with an outline. I, I, I love outlines. Um, something's up with the formatting of, of, the, of my um, table of contents right now, but yeah, I was just trying to show you the outline, but yeah, I started with an outline, you know, um, you know, I have the three sections, when, why, how, uh, three is a good number. It's, you know, kind of reminds me of those five paragraph essays we always had to write in school. You got an intro, three arguments, and then a, an outro. Um, so yeah, I, I tend to start with an outline and then fill the content in the outline and then the thing just gets longer and longer. So I, I kind of never really think in terms of turning a page. Yeah. Yes. Are you using Edge right now? Edge? Oh, no, I'm using Chrome. OK, I'm on Chrome, and, and that format that you're on the menu is, is not there on the line side. But um, that's, that's uh, hmm. we need to look at that afterwards. Yeah. Because the, it, it's related to yeah, I'm using the table of contents uh, element in Elementor. So. That's what I'm saying. I didn't see it earlier, so something might not be loading. And that might be related to why that, um, that video animation. It could have reached the Maybe a refresh or something. Maybe. Oh. oh, am I no longer connected to the internet? Uh oh. Well, I'll I'll reconnect. Um, uh, any more questions? Oh, I'm connected again. Okay. Well, I guess really the biggest con is that it is you do need the internet. Yes. What you do for your contact form is what I want to request. I guess that you're asking to request certain products for such phone calls. Uh, you mean the, the form? Uh, well, in this presentation, I just have a form at the very end to collect questions and comments okay. about the presentation. Um, I, I said, you know, one, another example is if, if I wanted to, I can add another form here, like uh, posing the question, when you think of the word page, what comes to mind? And then having a form where people can actually input answers into the site. Uh, you know, I could have, you know, directed you to say like, oh, scan this QR code to visit the the page on your own browser and then, you know, enter your feedback here. Um, I could have added interactions like that. Yeah, is that an elementary form widget? Oh, I'm actually using just Google Forms. Google Forms. Uh -huh. Yeah, just a Google Form embed, but you can do that too. Here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I tend to use a lot of Google products, so. Mm -hmm. And it's a static site, so I think uh, because it's a static site, it it works better with a Google form than uh, an, a native form. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that menu, the feature, is that Gutenberg or is that Elementor? Elementor. Elementor, okay. Thank you. Uh, uh huh. Um, I do have two, two items I'm going to bring up. One was uh, your progress while you talked about I didn't notice that until you pointed it out. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a beautiful outline of the conference, very small. Oh, I can make it bigger. Yeah. That would be it. Second of all, um, well, I have two more questions. One is about US. Um, animations are are good for people who can see, mm -hmm. but handling them for people who are visually impaired, you know, it it really depends. On Mm -hmm. So I would be mindful of too many animations. You really have to 
any of the visuals you do have to be mindful of, you know, yeah. anything descriptive. Um, and in terms of, I love the idea. I've been in presentations since before PowerPoint became a thing. I remember all this persuasion, okay, for anybody who's <laughs> old enough to remember that. Um, so I love this idea because it flows. It's easier. I hate PowerPoint. <laughs> oh my God, it's too rigid. But my thing is, um, why would you want this uh, presentation that you're giving to a client to be accessible by for SEO? And yeah, I mean, if this was an er internal presentation, I would probably, you know, maybe put up a password page or, or, you know, not, not post it anywhere or, you know, I, there's definitely a difference between an internal presentation and a, and a marketing presentation. Okay. Yeah. And second of all, um, if you're making presentations for multiple clients, which is obvious, which is possible, I'm assuming you're putting this on your page and maybe well, if I were to build a web page presentation for a client, I would probably approach that the same way I would build a website for a client. You know, do they already have a site? Can I just add a web page to that site? Does it make sense for them to have their presentations at a different URL? Would a blog, um, would, a, would a Google page list format make more sense? Because that would just be a Google URL. Um, but yeah, I, I would just treat that just like any other website client. If that makes sense. Okay, I like to scroll a bit. I'm just trying to think of, from my standpoint, the practicality, how yeah. do I implement that? Yeah. And So, Lynn, I think two points, Faith, and I'm going to pick up on what you said. Um, I, I wonder about your thoughts. Um, the, the approach that you're taking, I, I think it's, it's certainly relevant to the day. Do you see generational acceptability? You know, the, the older folks that you know, grew up being taught to read from top to bottom, left to right, uh, are we so regimented in that uh, for the decades that we've been taught that way? The other piece I'll add here is that you whenever know, I think about the dynamic of Web 3.0, uh, you know, I love the concept here, going back to that. If I think if you've got something to say is dyslexic, I think where you might have a button up there at the top that just says, hey, click this button and we're gonna we're gonna flip through user styles to something that's really high contrast, it's black and white, we're gonna put different colors in there. I think that's one thing that the the, the rigidness of the previous world didn't necessarily offer from that standpoint. You got a PDF and it's like Take it or leave it, that's the only thing you've got from it. So I think that your approach is fantastic. But do you get resistance from you know, the folks that, like myself, that are in the group? Um, yeah, I think the, the most resistance comes from uh, just thinking about having to put a web page together. So if, if you're already building websites and you're a WordPress person doing this daily, that's not intimidating. But if all you do is, you know, you're, if you're normally just in Word doc, um, then building a web page might be intimidating. Um, as as far as like the format of like do do I see if older people prefer slides versus younger people prefer page lists? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I <laughs> my audience has for this presentation has been mostly WordPress meetups and mostly like this audience like this um, and I get kind of the same reactions like it they like scrolling down um, I haven't any had anyone say yeah 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 I haven't had anyone say to me like oh I miss I miss uh, hitting next I, I miss the the page turn <laughs> yes yeah I appreciate that Ensuring more people have uh, access to the work. Um, I, I imagine that uh, 
Actually, when I when I see people use a smartphone and I and I can see that their thumb is moving this way, I kind of think they're on Tinder. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I usually see this, but yeah, I guess you know you can read a book on a phone and, and do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, any more, any more questions? I just had a light bulb on yeah. in terms of the page or something you're talking about. It's anchor loops. Mm -hmm. Anchor loops. And here's anchor loops to go, like, okay, this would be a good page, this, that, that page. Mm -hmm. And also, your presentation is fantastic. I'm loving it. I'm not here. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see that little table of contents menu <coughs> as, as persistent. So that somebody can go there and go wherever they want. Yeah, that's what they're using. She's got a party in place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the video's playing. Yeah, but, but I like multiple pages. Yeah. Well, she's got stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got it all yeah. locked down. But within a subject, she's got an extensive page. Yeah. So maybe even more. I know that's outline hell. I love outlines. I love outlines. Hey, they, it helps you organize. You got to start, start from scratch. Always outline. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think some, sometimes I manually build a, a table of contents using anchor links. You know, like sometimes I don't want, you know, all of the headings to be in the in the table of contents. So sometimes I'll build it manually. But um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I like that idea. I like that idea. Cool. Um, well, this is my first time giving this presentation uh, in person. All other times I've been like webinars where I'm just like alone in my room. So thank you for being such an amazing audience with so much feedback and, and other tips for the future. Um, I would love to see you guys make some web page presentations. If you do, send them to me. So maybe I'll put some other examples at the bottom of this web page. Mm -hmm. Question. Uh, could you go back to the thank you page? Sure. Just this page? Or the one with the skeleton? Oh, this one. Thank you. I definitely feel like Steve Jobs in this turtleneck. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks.